The uh, sudden and mysterious hearing loss by some American and a Canadian diplomat in Cuba it made headlines as an international incident. It also raised questions about the temporary and permanent loss of hearing, their causes, and treatment. Clinical nurse specialist Alice Benjamin, a.k.a. Nurse Alice, is here uh, with important information for us this morning. Great to see you. Thanks Hi, for being good here. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Sure. So what would the major cause of hearing loss be for folks? Well, hearing loss can occur for a variety of reasons, and we typically categorize hearing loss based on the part of the ear that's been damaged. So there's conductive hearing loss, which happens when there's a delay or an obstruction with sound traveling through the ear. Some of that could be like uh, tumors in the way, there's fluid in your ear, malformation of the inner ear. Mm -hmm. And then there's also what we call sensoneural hearing loss. And that happens when there's damage to the inner ear and the nerve that travels, uh, take the information that travels from the ear to the brain. And that could happen when there's head trauma, when there's medication that can be damaging to the inner ear. So there's a variety of reasons why someone can experience hearing loss. And, and the other one, I, I think, is old age, right? I'm, I'm, well, I, I find out, <laughs> turns out that I can't hear a lot of the things that my, my sons can hear. Well, I'll say this. So aging is the largest predictor of hearing uh -huh. loss, but just because you age doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to lose your hearing. So okay. rest assured. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you mentioned the different types uh, of hearing loss or some reasons that we could be dealing with that. Are there ones that are treatable and ones that aren't? Yes, so depending on the cause of your hearing loss, uh, some of them can be treated with medication, with surgery, or even a hearing aid. But it depends, again, on what the underlying cause is. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone who has maybe a benign tumor in your ear, although you, can, you may have that surgically removed, or if you're not opting not to, you may be eligible for a hearing aid so it can overcome, increase mm -hmm. the sound, so it overcomes the tumor so you can still hear. But if you're someone who has damage in your auditory nerve or your inner ear, sound is going to be distorted. So even if I turn the volume up, it's going to be distorted, mm -hmm. just like a radio with a bad transmission. Right. And, and is hearing loss preventable? And, and, and is it something that, you know, from the time I was a kid, I heard, don't, don't listen to the radio so loud or take the headphones off. Is that all true? Yes, it's true to a certain extent. Now, you can't change your genes, so if you have a genetic issue, and you can't change, stop the aging process, although we'd like to, but you can take steps to protect your hearing. So making sure that you don't expose yourself to reoccurring and loud noises. Mm -hmm. Making sure you keep your ears clean. Refrain from inserting um, objects into your ears. I know people like including to clean Q-tips. Yes, clean, including Q-tips. And so, you know, they're, and getting a baseline auditory test with yeah. your f uh, physician. That way you know what you're working with. Because a majority of hearing loss is gradual, so it's often difficult to detect until you're so far gone. But I wonder, I, you see kids starting out at a very young age that have earbuds yeah. in all day. Yeah. After yes. years of that, could that make a difference in their hearing? Absolutely. Yeah. And actually there were studies that were released um, earlier this year that talk about how hearing loss is occurring at much younger and younger mm. ages and they're almost wanting to consider an epidemic because yes, you want to put your, your earbuds in and you want to jam out to your favorite music, but that frequent and reoccurring ex exposure to loud sounds can be very damaging. Now we know loud sounds can be very damaging, yeah. but there are actually sounds that we can't hear really, like that what? can also be damaging. So when we think of sound, you have to realize there's frequency, which is pitch, and then there's also intensity, which is sound. Mm -hmm. There are low pitch sounds that we are exposed to that we can't hear. Mm -hmm. It's inaudible, right? Mm -hmm. um, and those sounds, if we're exposed to them constantly, then they can cause damage to our inner ear. And as well, those low pitch sounds can be delivered with very high intensity, but they're so low pitch, we can't hear them. In fact, in Cuba, they, I, I yes. believe that's one of the theories that some sort of sonic device was used to bombard the ears of people in that area. They, they don't know exactly what it is, but that's the theory, I believe. Yes, so sounds with very low frequency, mm -hmm. um, you can't hear them with the naked ear. And again, if you're exposed to them for a prolonged period of time, it can cause damage to your inner ear, which can cause hearing loss. We know this from studies of the wood, um, wind turbine mills. And you know, those, not only will you encounter hearing loss, but you can also encounter other health problems. Mm. Yeah. Um, so tell us about that. What are some of the other health problems? So when you have damage to your inner ear, it's responsible for your balance, your mm -hmm. vestibular system. So when your balance is off, you can feel dizzy. You can feel as if the room is spinning. You can feel anxious. You can feel nervous. You can actually have some nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and even experience um, other things that will really throw your day off. You won't be able to function properly. Mm -hmm. But there's such vague sim symptoms yeah. that you can't really pinpoint it to an ear problem mm -hmm. because... Typically, we don't know that, you know, it's, it was sound that caused it because 
we suspect that these are from low frequency sounds, again, that were undetectable by the naked ear. So there was a lot of investigation, I'm sure, that's involved in that process yeah. to even identify that it uh, was sound. Mm. Interesting. For more information on this about clinical nurse specialist Alice Benjamin, you can follow her on social media and you can check out her website as well, asknursealice.com. Thanks for being here. Thank you so Thanks much for having me.